something that you learned in this process maybe you didn't expect to learn going into this quarterback competition? Uh, I think the biggest thing uh, is just controlling the things that you can control. Um, you know, taking it one day at a time and focusing on getting better. You know, the, those little steps, I think sometimes uh, it's easy to get caught up in, in the big picture uh, and, you know, you don't make any progress doing it. I think the, the most important thing is, you know, focus on it every day and, you know, making the steps to become the best player you can possibly be. Uh, we will go Ari Wasserman, second row right, The Athletic. Kyle, when you're in a program for multiple years, just in a, in a world where people are leaving when they don't win jobs and, you know, going to new places, like, what do you think the continuity does for a quarterback battle? And, you know, how more comfortable do you feel in a system, you know, being familiar with everything and, and, and the way that Ryan has done things here? Yeah, I think, you know, his track record obviously speaks for itself. Um, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, you look at the guys uh, that have stuck around at this program, I mean, they all go on to do really good things. Um, and so, you know, even though, you know, it didn't happen exactly right away for me, um, you know, I knew that, you know, it was a marathon and that, you know, if I stuck around and, you know, trusted the process and kept getting better and that, you know, I'd put myself in a good position. Uh, we will go fourth row middle, Pat Murphy, 24-7 sports. Kyle, Ryan was just talking to us about his first year as a starting quarterback and trying to do too much early on. He threw interceptions when he shouldn't. You've obviously started the game. You've played a decent amount. But how do you kind of approach, you know, if you're the guy week one, not trying to, to overdo things and, and just kind of play the game? Mm -hmm. when yeah. Yeah, I think just doing your job is the most important thing. Um, you know, with the team, uh, you know, around us here, I mean, the O-line, the receivers, the running backs, tight ends, I mean, they're, they're going to make plays for you. And then, you know, just uh, sticking, I think, to, you know, the routine plays and then, you know, when the opportunities present itself to go out and make a big throw or make a big play, you know, that's when I think, you know, you let your, your talent uh, on display. Um, but, you know, that'll come. I think just getting in the flow of the game is important. Um, and, uh, and getting the ball to, to the playmakers and, and letting them go to work. Kyle, deep right field, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Kyle, you obviously have had good receivers to throw to in the spring, but, but having Marvin back in the third capacity of the is not always practicing in the spring. Julian and Mecca being back, all of the running backs being there, does it feel a little more comfortable? Will it feel a little more comfortable in fall camp than it did? in spring have all of your weapons back. Yeah, I think uh, spring was good uh, for those younger guys, um, you know, getting first team reps. And then um, I think, like you said, getting, you know, Marv, Mech, and Julian all back healthy. Um, you know, I think, you know, those three would out of doubt the best receiving core in the nation. So, I mean, that's obviously going to help. Um, but I think just kind of having, you know, the, the chemistry uh, from the spring with those younger guys is going to be good. And then obviously, you know, been throwing to those guys for three years now. So, uh, you know, I think it kind of all worked out um, in a good way. Uh, third row right, Cameron T. Robinson, The Athletic. Kyle, uh, when you, you, you look back at the spring game um, going into this, this summer, what did you see on tape that you liked that you did? And what did you see on tape that you were like, okay, this is something I need to fix or improve on? Yeah, I think, um, you know, definitely made some plays, definitely, um, you know, wanted some, you know, reads back. But, you know, that's that's part of, you know, the, the growing process. Um, and then I think, you know, this offseason, that really gave me a good understanding of, you know, where I needed to work and, and things I needed to get, uh, you know, take a to step in. And, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I really worked this offseason, you know, with purpose, with intention. And, um, you know, I think that was, that was really good for me. I think I grew a lot from that. Was it like a timing thing, spring, or just, uh, just kind of getting a hold of the system? Specific. Yeah, I think um, just a little bit of everything. I think there was, you know, a lot of good to, to take away and then definitely some things, you know, you wanted to clean up. Um, and so, uh, you know, just watching that film, not only from the spring game, but just from spring practices, I think, you know, there's definitely, like I said, some good and some bad. Um, but just, uh, you know, taking, you know, the things that you want to improve on and, you know, really honing in on them and, uh, you know, not shying away from them and, you know, just trying to make, you know, every weakness a strength, I think was really kind of the mindset this offseason. Right next door, Rob Aller, Columbus Dispatch. So there's two parts to this quarterback thing, right? There's the mechanics, analytics, what, what you're doing on tape, where your hand is, where your hands are. And then there's the relational side, like leadership and command of the huddle. How are you, how do you go back and forth between those two? Is it thrown into the same soup or do you have to like compartmentalize? Now I'm going to work on this, now I'm going to work on this. 
Yeah, I think, like I said, I think being intentional is important. Um, you know, I think, you know, there's a time to work on, you know, mechanics, obviously, like going out there in the field and, you know, watching film of yourself and, you know, being, you know, your, your own hardest critic. I think that's important. And then I think, you know, also, like you said, being a leader, I think, you know, that comes in situations with the team um, and just kind of, you know, taking that next step. Um, so I think, you know, like I said, I think being intentional is the biggest thing. And, you know, when those moments present themselves, you know, making sure that you maximize them. Uh, you know, I think both uh, have kind of come, uh, I want to say, kind of naturally. Uh, you know, I think, you know, when CJ was here, you don't want to step on his toes. Obviously, it's his team. Uh, but obviously, with him being gone, I think, you know, you kind of naturally step up into that role, being a little bit more of a vocal leader and, uh, you know, letting your voice be heard. And then uh, with the mechanics, I think that's always something that, you know, I've been, you know, big on. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, when you get in the, the flow of the season and, you know, in spring ball uh, and there, you know, there's a lot going on, you don't necessarily always have the, the time to, you know, hone in. And so I think that, that off season, uh, you know, that we just went through was good, you know, just having a few months to really, you know, take a step back and, and you know, dive into that was good. Front row right, Austin Ward, rivals, dot in the eyes. Kyle, I know that the pressure you put on yourself is more than anyone else, the expectations you have. Well, when the conversation with Coach Day or the fan base or anybody else is that the quarterback has to be a first round pick, win the Heisman, win a national championship, is there ever any moments that that is overwhelming to think about? Yeah, I think, you know, no one will ever put um, you know, higher expectations or, you know, a higher standard on, you know, myself than, than I will, you know, and I always think that, um, you know, uh, you know, you have to go out there and play with a lot of confidence, obviously, uh, you have to go out there and uh, I think really just hone in on every play. And, you know, you look at the guys before, you know, like I've been watching, you know, film of like 2018, watching Dwayne, and then watching, you know, JT and years before and Justin and CJ, I think, you know, they've all, you know, set a good precedent, but they, they've all done it their own way. Um, so I think, you know, just kind of realizing like there's, you know, a lot of different ways this can be done. Um, but, you know, like I said, I don't think, you know, anyone's ever put, you know, an expectation on myself that I didn't expect for, you know, for myself. Uh, far, right, uh, far left, rather, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Kyle, being you know, the older guy in this competition, do you go into this competition feeling like this is my job to go in? Um, you know, I think not even, you know, focusing on the competition, I think, you know, I feel, you know, the best I have felt going into a camp before. You know, obviously I've had, you know, the most experience um, I've had going into a camp. And, um, you know, I think now more so than, than ever, I'm just, you know, focusing on myself, you know, and I know I'll be in a good position if, you know, I put the best, you know, version of myself out there. Right behind him, Jeff Jefferson, Press Pros. Uh, Coach Hartline and, and you're just, how do you feel he's, uh, uh, working into his new role and what kind of relationship do you have with him? Yeah, Coach Hartland did a great job this spring, um, you know, for calling plays for the first time. You know, I was really, you know, pleasantly surprised with the way he saw the field. I think, you know, just all his experience from coaching and playing um, showed. And, uh, you know, I think he kind of sees the field like a quarterback. Um, and so, you know, he did a, a great job with the, the pass concepts, the run concepts, all that. And, um, you know, just getting on the same page with him is key. But, you know, I think, you know, just his years of, you know, being around the game have really, you know, kind of spotlighted themselves. Uh, front row middle, Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. You've mentioned the word intentional a couple times. What does that mean to you? Can you kind of elaborate on what that means? Yeah, I think, um, you know, sometimes it's easy to get caught up in, you know, having, you know, so much you want to work on, you know, whether it's, you know, mechanics or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, but I think, you know, having a plan uh, before you go into a workout or a throwing session, like whatever it is, just, you know, being very conscious of what you're trying to accomplish, I think is, is important. Uh, right behind him, Max Olson, the athletic. Hey, Kyle, when you think back to your first fall camp here as a freshman, you're competing with CJ, they bring in Quinn. Kind of where was your confidence level then, and, and where is it now? Yeah, I think, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Um, going to that first fall camp, you know, I didn't know what the schedule was going to look like. I didn't know what the practices were going to look like and all that. And, um, you know, having two fall camps under my belt and, you know, going into year three, I think, you know, you have a good understanding of what to expect. Um, and, you know, you know what it takes to, you know, get the job done. So I think, you know, just having that experience is uh, very helpful, you know, going into that, that third one. Front row right, 
Tim May, Letterman Rowe. You got Coach Dennis, you got Coach Fitch, you got uh, Brian Hartline, you got uh, Ryan Day. Who are you listening to the most? <laughs> uh, I think all of them have, you know, a lot of good insight. And uh, the good thing about all of them is they kind of, you know, preach the same things. And, you know, obviously all, all those guys have a different way of getting it across. Um, so I think, you know, just all of them really, I mean, they, they all know what they're talking about. They've all had, you know, a lot of years of experience in the game. And, you know, you look at all their track records, I mean, it speaks for itself. So, you know, really you can't go wrong with, with you know, who you're listening to and who you're getting advice from. And uh, real quickly, uh, considering your head coach uh, was in this position many years ago, fighting for a starting job, <clears throat> but also then played and stuff, uh, how much do you just lean on him uh, to a certain extent, Kyle, to kind of understand what, what the, what's important? You know? Yeah, I think it's always helpful having uh, a coach that's played the position. Um, you know, there's... Uh, definitely something to be said for for a guy that stood back there and you know taking snaps um, and, and you know played quarterback and obviously I think you know you look at what he's done you know it's you know no secret that you know he's the best I think in in college football at you know developing guys so um, you know anytime he, he gives you a piece of advice you know you gotta you know take it and, and really you know apply it. Uh, right behind him, Nathan Barrett, Cleveland.com. What's the most important football thing that you accomplished this summer? Oh, man. Um, I think, honestly, uh, just being able to, to get up in the team uh, and, uh, you know, just be a vocal leader, I think that's really important with, uh, you know, the quarterback. I think you, you watch those best guys like Brady, um, Burrow, and Rodgers. I think, you know, the one thing, you know, they obviously all have different styles of play, but they're all, you know, very vocal guys. And, uh, you know, I think that was kind of the next step in my, in my leadership process is being heard. And, um, you know, I think this offseason I did a good job of, you know, getting up and, uh, you know, talking in front of the team. Deep center field, Jeremy Birmingham, dot in the eyes, rivals. I've known you a couple of years, and that is not really in your personality sometimes to be that loud guy, that vocal guy. Yeah. During spring ball, you were very uh, demonstrative in practice. Uh, we saw you throwing a football up and hitting the ceiling in the woody after a touchdown. Like, is that intentional, or is that just coming out of you naturally now because you're being put in this position potentially to, to lead? Yeah, I, I think that is just kind of the uh, – the joy and the competitive nature when it comes to playing this game. I mean, you know, it's played and, and coached by, you know, the most competitive people on the planet. Um, and so, you know, like you said, just having that, that energy and, you know, having that, that joy of playing football, I think that's where that kind of comes from. And, you know, it's been natural, I think, you know, like I said, when, you know, CJ was here, it was obviously his team, um, you know, but now that, you know, he's gone, just being able to kind of, you know, step into that, that new leadership role, being more vocal um, and, you know, just kind of, you know, letting, you know, my true color show. I think that's kind of where that comes from. Got time for just a couple more. Uh, second row left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. You mentioned a couple of times that you didn't really want to step on CJ's toes when mm -hmm. it was his team. And so maybe you kind of backed off a little bit and let him have yeah. his moment. So are there just things about you and your personality and your leadership that the team hasn't had an opportunity to see because you were showing respect to the guy who was in front of you. Right? Yeah, I think that's that's kind of, um, you know, what I was talking about earlier, just being able to, to get up and speak in front of the team. You know, I think sometimes, uh, you know, when there's, you know, too many guys trying to say something, the, the message can kind of get, um, you know, muffled a little bit. Uh, but, you know, now that, you know, he's gone and, you know, you kind of feel comfortable getting up and, and you know, talking in front of the guys, I think that's kind of been, you um, you know, that, that next step in, you know, that, that leadership role and, and, you know, that aspect of being, you know, heard and felt. Uh, front row right, Joey Kaufman, Plumas Dispatch. Cal, as far as your, your working out over the summer, obviously you guys are, are not with coaches as much as, as far as strength and conditioning, outside of like kind of strength and conditioning stuff. What, what were some of the things that you did um, from, from camps or coaches or private coaches or sort of the, what was your summer like kind of overall from mm -hmm. all that stuff? Yeah, so obviously, you know, Coach Mick, um, you know, got us right with the, the running and lifting, so getting bigger, stronger, and faster with him. And then, uh, you know, working with my quarterback coach from back home on just, you know, mechanics and, you know, all the, the little details of, you know, the actual playing of quarterback. Um, you know, we kind of honed in this offseason, got some really good throwing sessions in. You know, we came out here, I went back home. Um, so just uh, kind of, like I said, being intentional, you know, if I'm in the, the weight room, you know, being, you know, 
very intentional with my lifts um, and, and, you know, really focusing on, you know, each individual lift and what I'm trying to get done, whether it's, you know, the running, being very intentional with that, and then obviously going out there in the field and honing in on my mechanics. So those kind of three areas. And then, um, you know, watching film and uh, just trying to, to, you know, expand in all those areas. Right behind him, Doug Maurice, the podcast. Kyle, with, with where you are right now as a quarterback, what is your balance between making plays, wanting to take big shots, be a playmaker versus making sure you don't turn the ball over or make mistakes? How, how do you see that balance right now? Yeah, I think um, getting on the same page with, you know, who's calling the plays and, you know, with each play call, you know what the, the, the coach is looking for. Um, and so I think that was one thing that Coach Harlan did a great job of. Uh, in the spring is, you know, kind of letting you know what he was looking for in each play, um, you know, why he's calling a play and understanding the, the reason behind it, um, you know, and there will be times to make plays. I mean, obviously, you know, with the weapons that we have here um, and, you know, you go back and, and watch our film, like, you know, we're going to take our shots. We're going to, you know, throw the ball down the field and the opportun opportunities are going to be there. But it is when, you know, they present themselves, you know, you can't force anything. And, you know, if a, a team wants to play, you know, the safety's deep and, and not let you take anything, you know, you got to understand that and work the underneath zones. And then, you know, if they start getting aggressive and, you know, trying to take that away, that's when, you know, the shots are there. Um, and so I think, you know, just understanding the, the reason behind the play calls is important. And, um, you know, I think that was one thing that, you know, both Coach Day and, and Coach Hartline did a great job of. How do you, where do you think you are as a quarterback in broken plays, once something breaks down, maybe you have to escape the pocket? Where are you? Are you good at that? Do you want to get better at that? Yeah, I, I feel like I am good at that. And, you know, I feel like, you know, you can stand up here and, you know, I can say whatever, but at the end of the day, I think the, the film will speak for itself. And final question, second row right, Bill Landis, the podcast. Kyle, I know that you and Devin are really close. I'm not, I'm not trying to paint this as anything other than that. But, but when you're competing with someone for a job, I'm sure you have some feel of your strengths and weaknesses compared to your competitor's strengths and weaknesses. When that's the case, do you try to accentuate the things that you think maybe you're a little behind in or do you focus more on your strengths to try to elevate those and, and create separation that way or do you just not think about it yeah I don't, I don't think that's really something that you know crosses your mind obviously when you know you're out there on the field you're going to be competing with you know the defense whoever you're going against um and so i think uh, you know, Devin will say this too. I think, you know, we definitely pushed each other in the spring, which was good. I think, you know, he, he brought the best out of me. I brought the best out of him. And I think it's been a really healthy competition uh, with each other. Um, and so, you know, when you go out there in the field, I think, you know, you're just focused on one thing and it's doing your job to, you know, the best of your abilities. Great. Kyle, thank you very cool. much. Cool. Thanks.